In this video, I'm going to demonstrate the new screenshot captor functions for working with scanners. By default, screenshot captor is not configured with scanner support enabled. So let's go into the options, go to the scanner options tab, and click to enable scanner functions. And let's just quickly look at the options here. Screenshot captor supports both Twain and WIA scanning. So you would choose one of these. Some scanners support both. Some scanners only have one driver. And depending on your scanner, it may work better or faster using Twain or WIA. So I'm going to choose Twain. There's my scanner here. I'm going to choose by default not to use the native scanner dialog since it's quicker if I just do it all through Screenshot Captor. You can set the DPI resolution and some various other options here and some options for actions to perform every time you per do a scan and if you're always working with the smaller area of the scanner bed you might uh, configure that here but let's just leave everything as it is go back to the program and you'll see a new toolbar down here on the bottom the scanner toolbar which has some common functions that you need to perform while you're scanning but let's just click this far left button for acquiring an image from the scanner and of course there are hotkeys for these things as well and a scan menu up top with some other common options so let's just click this button here and you'll see that a scan is triggered from the scanner and it scanned the page and brought it in okay so here's the first thing to notice in screenshot capture there are lots of complex scanning tools and some of them are quite powerful. Screenshot Capture is designed like the rest of the features in the program to let you do common operations very quickly and perform lots of screenshots or in this case scans very quickly with little interaction. You can see it's automatically named the file with the date and time and of course you can customize that and saved it. Uh, I did want to show you actually this quick field option which is quite useful if you're performing lots of scans for exact example I'm going to do a couple scans on cabinets you can add a quick field here and now whenever you perform a scan or take a screenshot what you'll see is that it's going to add that quick field to the file names it's very useful if you're capturing lots of screenshots or images to have them all with this prefix okay let's get back to our scan so here's our image. We could work with it now. But you can see there's a problem here. It's slightly rotated wrong because it didn't get put into the scanner bed properly. You can quickly rotate 90 degrees either way, which is something that happens normally when you scan. You might have it oriented wrong. But for fine rotations, we click this little blue circle button. And up pops this more sophisticated alignment dialog. And from here, we can actually, by eye, rotate it. We can also ask it to automatically try to detect it. Let's click the Auto Detect Skew button here and give it a couple of seconds. OK, so there it's done its best job at rotating the image to get it aligned. That looks pretty good to me. I like to use the top and bottom of the dialog here to adjust maybe a fraction of a degree counterclockwise. OK, so. We've rotated to get it straight, and you can see it's a little fuzzy because the program uses a low-resolution preview so that you can very quickly rotate. Let's go back. What was it before? I guess I'll auto-detect it again. Okay. Um, if you do want to see what it looks like, you can click this high-quality refresh, which will show you your current angle. I think that was it. Yes, that was it. Okay. So let's accept this. Now we've got our image. Um, let's zoom in a bit. We've got our image rotated into the right uh, angle. And you can see, actually, it's put this little selection box over what it thinks is the image. And that's the auto, um, auto foreground selection feature whose threshold is governed here. So depending on the threshold settings, it will do a better or worse job depending on your background 
of what your foreground is. Okay, so anyway, you could obviously adjust that a bit and then hit the crop button down here or over here to crop it. And there's our image. And we could now click the save button to save it or do some more color enhancement on the image. It's a little hard to see in this small window, um, but we've got some other presets here. Let's see what we can do. Of course, we can undo everything. We can sharpen, we can increase the gain to sort of bring out, that's no good, to bring out the colors a little better. There, that looks a little better. And then, of course, we could print it with the print button here, and it's sending it to the printer. Uh, you can see here the size of the file. What else could we do? If you wanted to do a more controlled print, we could do a print from here, which would let us adjust the margins and fit it to the page or um, whatever. So there you have it. There's the scanning functions of Screenshot Capture. One thing I almost forgot. What I showed you was scanning that bypasses the built-in scanner dialog, which is very useful for doing quick scans or repeated scans with the same settings. However, there are times when you do want to bring up the scanner dialog and customize the scan, and for that you can just hit the second button here, which initiates a scan with the scanner dialog, and you can see for my scanner, here's the dialog, and this lets me customize the DPI and the various options that are unique to my scanner, including a preview and a brightness control, etc. So if you do want to use your scanner dialog system, you can use that. I find that most of the time I do all my scanning now through Screenshot Capture, though.